Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to start really getting our mathematical skills ready to tackle the rest of the class. We're going to start to talk about vectors. I know you all know the basic idea of what a vector is, or at least most of you probably do. Usually, you encounter vectors for the first time when you take freshman physics, if you take freshman physics. And most of you guys taking Cal 3 are probably taking physics. So you probably have a pr pretty good idea of what a vector is. But in this part of calculus, we really need to understand the nuts and bolts of it because it's going to, you know, you're dealing with vectors in this class is going to be like adding and subtracting is, um, you know, to algebra. You just have to know how to do it, and if you don't, you're just going to get stuck over and over again. So we're going to cover the intro to vectors with a little more mathematical rigor than you usually get in your physics class, in your physics class, and um, we're going to build that foundation up. So what is a vector? Okay, a vector. I think you probably all know, or most of you know is some quantity that the math guys invented, very useful thing to understand, and it is something that has a measure of the magnitude, how strong something is, and its direction, okay? So uh, it's not just a measurement of intensity, it's a measurement of how, how strong something is or how weak it is, and also the direction it's pointing. So what are some examples of a vector, okay? Uh, let's see, the electric field is a vector. So the electric field is this thing that, quote, emanates. It, it really doesn't emanate. It's, it's a mathematical construct. But the way we draw it is it emanates from, from these, these charged objects. And it has a certain strength. The electric field has a certain strength. It can be very strong if you have a, you know, a lot of concentration of charge. Okay? Or it can be really weak if you only have one or two electrons. Okay? And so that's a, the magnitude is, is the strength of it. And also the direction that that electric field points, right? Is, uh, is part of the vector quantity. So it's the direction and it's also the magnitude. Magnetic field's a vector, okay? Uh, what are some other things? Force, the simple idea of just the concept of a force is a vector. If I push on a car like this, I'm pushing this direction with 100 newtons of force. If I push it this way, which is slightly different, if I push with 100 newtons this way, instead of this way, that is a different vector. Even though I'm pushing with 100 newtons, in both cases, I'm pointing different directions. So because it's a different direction, it's a different vector. And when you write it down mathematically, it'll look totally different. Okay? The, the actual components of the vector will look totally different, depending on which way you're pushing. So that's why it's, it's the magnitude and the direction. Uh, okay? Velocity. When I'm going uh, 210 uh, meters per second on the train, or something, and I'm going east, well that's, you know, I'm going east, that's my direction, and I'm going with a certain velocity, that's the magnitude of my, of my speed, and so I'm traveling with a vector quantity in that direction and that intensity, okay? Uh, what is a scalar, okay? Scalar is uh, something you hear a lot about, we're not going to deal with it too much in, in calculus here, but it's something that usually is introduced with a vector. A scalar is something that only has the intensity, it only has the, uh, the, the only property that makes sense when you're talking about a scalar doesn't have anything to do with direction, it's it's all about how strong something is. So an example there would be the temperature in this room. Okay? The temperature, uh, it doesn't have any direction associated with it. I mean, the temperature this way doesn't have any difference than the temperature going this way. Okay? It's just an intrinsic thing. I move my finger around the room at different points, and every single point has a number we call the temperature. It relates to the energy of the air right around my fingertip, right? how much energy that air has. That's what I interpret as temperature. So as I move my finger around, if my finger is the temperature reading measurement, I'm going to get different values Okay, uh, as I move my finger around, maybe colder, maybe hotter. So it has an intensity, but it has no direction. Okay, uh, Pressure is the same way. If you look at the uh, pressure inside of a vessel, it might, be, you know, it might be very high pressure or very low pressure, but pressure itself, the concept of pressure itself doesn't actually have any direction associated with it. It's just how tightly compact the, the molecules are that you're talking about, your air or your water or whatever. But pressure by